Hello guys and girls, this is Angela from the London App Brewery, back with another episode on how to make apps with no programming experience. Now, if you recall in the last episode, we made a array that contained the image names of the six dice faces. Now, in today's episode, we are going to introduce randomness, or rather pseudo-randomness, so generating a random number by the computer so why do we need this random number? So remember we have a dice array that consists of the six images that represent the six possible sides of the dice. Now they are named um, dice one through to dice six, but the index of the dice array starts from zero, um, if you remember from the last episode, and goes all the way up to five. So when we generate if a random number, we will want a number between zero and five, and then we're gonna use that number to pick out the dice image. So say if we generate a random number that happened to be three, it will in fact pick out the fourth dice image because it starts from zero. And say if we had a random number that was uh, one, then it would pick out the second dice image, etc. Now, just a brief note about computerized randomness. There is, of course, no randomness in a computerized system because it is essentially a machine that is that works with uh, ones and zeros, so with transistors that are on or off. And by definition, it cannot be random. So how do we then generate a random number? So when we ask um, our app or our phone to give us a random number, what exactly happens? So there's a number of ways that this can be achieved and very clever people, much cleverer than myself, have come up with fantastic algorithms that simulate statistical randomness. Um, so for example, they might use the very last digit in a voltage reading. Or sometimes they use, for example, the timestamp um, at the particular time and then use some sort of um, formula to generate a random number. Or sometimes they can even use your keystroke, etc. But that goes into way too much depth for what we need right now. So let's get to our app. So now let's take a look inside our Xcode project as we left it from last time. So we made a array that is called dice array. And with the let keyword, we are saying that we are not going to mutate the array. Now that means once we've put something inside our array box, we are not gonna change it again. And inside this box, the type is an array of strings. So strings of characters, and it contains the image names for the images that correspond to our dice faces. So all the way from dice one through to dice six. And now these image names are the same as the ones here inside our ass assets folder. So once the app starts out, uh, view did load is run. We manually assign the image dice six to the left hand frame and we put in dice one to the right hand frame. So this is not going to change ever because it is hard coded. Because I've manually put in the names, no matter how many times you open up the app, it will always be six on the left and one on the right. Now that would not make a very good dice app. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to make a random number and use that random number as an index to pick out a random dice image. So let's use a let constant because I'm not going to change the random number. Let random number equal and I'm going to use the function arc for random uniform open and close bracket. Now this function is something that comes for free 
when you import the UIKit library. So inside the UIKit library, there's another library called Foundation. Inside that library, there is the function body for this function, arc for random uniform, and it generates a pseudo random number because machines cannot be random because they are made up of ones and zeros. They are a number of transistors switching in on and off, and by definition, a machine cannot be random. So what we're doing instead is using some sort of artificial process to generate a random appearing number. So once we call arc for random underscore uniform, inside the bracket, we're going to put in a parameter. So the parameter is going to be the upper bound of the range of random numbers. So here we have an array. Remember that everything in computers start numbering from zero. So this is at index zero. Here we're at index five. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. Now, so we need a random number between zero and five in order to select random images from um, the whole range of our dice array. So the way that this function works is that it generates a random number between zero and n minus one, where n is obviously this number that you put into the parameter. So we need a number between zero and five. So n minus one, um, so zero and five. So that will be then six here. So if we put in arc for random uniform six, it will generate a number between zero and n minus one, five which is perfect. So now it's giving me a little yellow warning. Now it's saying that um, the mutable, immutable value random number was never used. Consider replacing it. So that's saying that you made a variable called a, a constant rather called random number, but you never used it. So let's use it now. So we're going to do the same as above, dice image view one. So that's the picture frame on the left. Um, access its image property, and we're gonna assign it to a UI image that is named um, with the dice array. So we're gonna pick the dice array, and we're gonna use the random number as an index to select a image name from the dice array. So here, if the random number was three, then we would pick out the third index, which is here, zero, one, two, three. Dice four will be displayed on the image frame here. So now it's giving me a red warning. So what is it saying? It's saying cannot subscript a value of type string array with an index of type uint32. So what is that all about? It's saying that in order to pick out a uh, image from dice array, you must put in an index number inside the square brackets. But that index number must be of type int or an integer. But the arc for random uniform function actually generates a unsigned integer, uint, of size 32 bits. So that's not what we want. So instead, we are going to cast it, which means changing its type to an int by just writing int and then bracketing the function inside. And now we convert this number, which is a uint32, into an integer, insert it into here as an index, pick out the random index from dice array and then use that as the image view on the left. Now we're going to do the same thing for the right. Now I know that copy and pasting is probably a lot faster, but it generates a load of um, bugs usually. So remember good practice is to not copy and paste. 
but it is very good practice to simply start, you know, the, the beginning of your method or function name or variable name, write one to three letters, and then Xcode will auto suggest the ones that you're probably trying to use and then typing enter. This usually reduces spelling mistakes. And sometimes these method and function names can be very, very long, especially if they were named by Apple. <laughs> so let's get rid of this line because we're no longer going to hard code our app and we are going to use the random number to generate a random dice image instead so let's go ahead and run our app and see what happens right so there we go our app is loaded up and now the eagle-eyed among you will spot that there is a bit of a problem. So once our app loads, the view did load method gets called and we generate a random number with our arc for, unif arc for random uniform function. And we insert that random number as the index into the dice array um, and picking out the image names for the dice image view one, dice image view two. Unfortunately, this random number is the same number. So here it would have generated a number of two because it's index zero, one, two, because it's picked out dice three. So it must have been index two there. Um, and it's slotted in there for the left and the right, which is not quite what we want. We don't really want the same image on both sides. We have two die um, and we want them to be different. So let's go ahead and change that. So let's call this one random number one and this one let random number two equal again casting arc for random uniform six and now we have two random numbers so the first one will use random number one second one will use random number two and this way when we run it again images on the left and right will no longer be the same but the problem is that when we press the roll button nothing happens other than the text roll button was pressed is printed. So why is that? It's because here in our IB action, which is linked up to the roll button. And when the roll button is pressed, nothing happens other than this line. So in the next episode, we are going to address this and we are going to make a custom method um, that generates new dice images each time we press the roll button. Right, so I hope to see you in the next episode where we learn about methods and functions. So we used a function in this episode, but the next time we're going to make our own um, and we are going to use it to generate random dice faces every time we press the roll button. So I hope you enjoy this lesson and I hope to see you next time. And remember to subscribe and hit like if you think what I'm doing is good or leave a comment if you want any other requests. So see you soon.